Um, this is a council tool, three and a half pound Dayton. Um, and I think it's the best, the best buy on the market um, for a, a full size spelling axe. I'll put it that way. Uh, you can buy it for about 55 bucks. And you could buy it for 55 bucks four years ago, five years ago. Uh, I believe this is at this point new old stock, which is why I think it's so cheap. This is still the uh, the redhead council tool axes. They're all painted um, aluminum wedge. But before, and I haven't seen it. That's all still in the box. Here we go. We've got that council tool three and a half pound Dayton. Um, one of the best reasons to buy a council tool axe is the handles. These handles are beautiful. Now, 2022 stamp, which I think is awesome. Um, th these handles, Council Tool is just nailing these handles. You know, one, one thing that I have noticed, I did notice in, in my other Dayton is this is, this is hung on a shelf here. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is pop off this, um, pop off this aluminum wedge. And that is actually easier than you might think. But I have to go check. I have to go check the clock to make sure I'm not late for this appointment. So, so basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a uh, whatever size drill bit this is. Uh, this is five thirty seconds, and I'm going to drill a hole down into this aluminum wedge, and then what I'm going to do is, ah, there it is. Take this piece of angle iron. I'm gonna thread the hole that I made in the, uh, in that uh, aluminum wedge, thread a bolt through this angle iron into that wedge, and I'm gonna pop that wedge right out. And it worked beautifully last time, just beautifully. So let's see if we can't, uh, do that same thing again. I wanted to mention is you want to drill your hole um, towards the uh, towards the bit third of the axe. That way, when you do go to use that leverage to get the wedge out, you have it working in your favor and not against you. Okay. Well, what the heck. Ah, running out of air. Okay, so a little, little ballast stall in the hole, which is not really a tap fluid, but it's what we're working with. Now you don't want to go too much bigger than the wedge because then your threads are going to go into uh, the wood. And that's, you know, you don't want to fasten the wedge to the wood. You want to get as much wedge as possible. We're going to take uh, a little more ballast all here on a straw. And we just want to flush all that out. Okay, so now here's where the magic happens. I'm gonna take my bolt and the way I think about it is I want to pop it out this way. If you do this way, you're gonna ruin your ax. If you do it this way, your fulcrum is gonna be the top of your pole. So that's how I'm gonna thread it here. And I wanna thread it, again, we want leverage working for us, not against us. So I want to thread it. Oh, that bolt's too small. I thought I had the right bolt. I must not, obviously. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. So let me see if I can, can get you here. All right. So if this works out the way I want it to, then what's going to happen is that wedge is is going to pop out and it's still going to be attached to the bolt and the angle iron and then i'm just going to have an axe handle on uh on the um on the head so let's see <laughs> Woo 
All right, boys. And and my my point six female viewership. <laughs> I looked up my viewer statistics, and I have point six percentage female viewers. <laughs> so to my you know, and I don't think that's a female. I don't think that's a woman. I think that's a guy that's borrowing his girlfriend's or wife's phone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. That worked out great. Um, you know, and, and so here you go. It my my hole was just slightly wider. Oh, focus! Slightly wider than the bit. And uh, it worked out just beautifully. The, the bottom of the eye is a little bit sharp. And so when it gets hung, it really wants to create a shelf. And uh, I, ideally you want your ax head to be over the wood, not into the wood. Over the wood creates an incredibly tight friction mechanical bond. Um, you know, when you, when you go into the wood, you're just pushing all the wood out of the way and you're not gonna get as tight a fit as you want. Um, so what, what I discovered, I believe is the issue, is the bottom of this ax eye just needs to be tapered a bit. And so I took an old uh, round file. You know, what what is this one? Uh, th this is a 730 seconds. And I am just chamfering the edge. And you, obviously you don't need to do it at the top. I mean, you can if you want, but you don't need to. Um, but what you get after you're done with this process is an ax that punches so far above its weight. Okay, so basically, I don't want to take off any of this awesome forged texture. Um, I'm going to keep that sticker. Woo! Got it. Okay. Um, I don't want to get rid of any of this amazing forged texture. I just want to take the paint off. And um, the... Uh, the tool that I'm gonna use to do that is, is just a basic, you know, braided, uh, braided um, um, cup, cup wheel. So we're gonna just get started. Now, it's pretty much just a question of how clean do you want it. Um, that paint, this is, it must be a dip paint. I think they probably dip it because the eye is coated through and through as well. Uh, it's a very, very, I would imagine, durable, high quality paint. Uh, it's just not the look that I'm going for. Um, I do have a walnut blaster. Um, I, I got my media blaster from Harbor Freight for like, 15 bucks and then the the bag of walnut shells was maybe a little more uh and i'm gonna spray in in these eye uh ridges here uh to get the paint out because i want as much grip in the axe eye as possible and then i'll do the same thing when i go over to uh just remove the last little bit of paint okay so i've got my uh, i just have a little um what is it maybe a five gallon air compressor and while that's running while that's charging up I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't get some of these high spots taken out of the eye. And I just don't want to be able to feel the high spots anymore with my finger. All right, that is now smooth and we've got a nice chamfer there. Both sides. All right, let's get to media blasting. Our biggest problem right now is moisture in the air. Uh, I've got this just little Harbor Freight media blaster with some walnut shell in it. I don't have an inline moisture filter, which you really do need 
if you're gonna media blast when it's as humid as it is right now. So I'm gonna try to hit the important spots uh, just because I think I'm gonna have maybe just a, a few minutes of blasting time before the, uh, the system just fills up with air. Okay, so it's just way too humid out there right now. If I had a, an inline moisture filter, I'm sure it would be better. But I do not have one of those, so I might have to invest in one. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do just to knock off the paint that's in the eye is take a half round file and just buzz that off. Okay, so basically what I am doing now is I'm working my way through just, you know, it's not a full polish or anything, but just through a basic polish of the axe here, just to get a little bit of shine on it. And I love, I'm kind of copying uh, what Branton Cochran does with their axes. They have just the natural forged texture and finish in the back, and then they, they go to like a real nice full polish. I'm not doing a full polish. Um, I pretty much just started with uh, 120 grit and am going, um, just real light passes up to a thousand here. And it hasn't actually taken me very long. Just get a little shine on the ax. Uh, so what we're gonna do from here, take my little buffing wheel, You know, and check that out. Real pretty. And I think I do want maybe just one 36 inch ax handle. Um, I wanna slide this down a bit. I, I do want it to be proud. Proud of the, uh, I want a proud hang by maybe, maybe a quarter inch. All right, worst injuries I've ever got from an ax are from sawing the dang kerf. <laughs> I mean, I, I seriously. And if you've got your ax handle pretty much dialed in, um, I only use the fine side, the round side, really. You don't wanna use the flat side here. That's how you're gonna make your shelf problem worse if you have one. Use the half round side on, on the, um, I guess it'd be medium grit. And then you just kinda wanna angle it towards the handle, facing down, kind of in towards the handle at an angle so you can create a nice taper. So I don't know if you remember what it looked like before, but here's what it looks like now. And that is something that I can just barely feel with my finger. I might actually deepen this taper a bit. And these Dayton's can be kind of an interesting hang because if you, if you see this slope, that slope means, you know, unlike a Jersey or a Connecticut or uh, Michigan or any of the other ax patterns, uh, what I think makes a Dayton unique is there's a, there's a slope, a slope to the eye. And so you have to plan for that. When you when you seed it, because you're gonna have your your taper needs to be here, it needs to be there, and I'm exaggerating. Whereas you know any other axe that has just a flat bottom of the eye, you can you can just taper it flat and you're good. This one has to be curved. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a shelf at the at the bottom, and and actually you really do want that mechanical bond at the front and the back more often or or more you need it more than you would in the middle because you're not going to get rocking in the middle you're going to get rocking at the front and at the back now let's just get a test fit here oh we got to go down well it's actually not going down as far as i thought it would Let's see. Uh, 
car and it just doesn't want a seat. I'm having trouble with this eye. Check my hang. God, that's pretty. That is a pretty, pretty ax. Beautiful. All right. I use a lot of glue when I do use it because you can always wipe it off, but you can't put it back on. The one benefit to hardwood wedges is um, they're not as prone to cracking or, or not, I, you know, I'm not even gonna say cracking because sometimes cracking is what you want. They're, they're not as prone to smashing when you put in a poplar wedge. Um, you have to be real careful to hit it straight up and down. Now, I'm gonna take one of my sharper chisels and just chamfer over that edge. We'll go out and test it. We're at this, but uh, got these big red oak rounds here. This is one of the smaller ones. Uh, this one, it's one of the last ones I loaded. Fairly thin, so um, should be small enough to handle with it with a good full size ax. So got a good edge on there. Let's see how it does. Nice kindling size pieces. Um, That's working great. Um, I think I'm gonna put up a, a second one of the smaller rounds here and uh, we'll get a split. What's up, bud? Oh, why don't you go dunk that in the, in the tub? It'll fill up. There you go. This is a bit taller. So I gotta step back just a little bit here. And if you're gonna go over the middle like that, and it's a bit tall, you do have to be careful. I think I'm gonna go just right down the middle.
Yeah? Oh, there's an ant. Yeah, there's ants all over here. They like wood with bark on it. Okay, so here we go. Here's uh, three or four rounds of, uh, of real big red oak. Uh, probably 70, 80 year old red oak. Plus a toy boat. Thanks, Duncan. Say hi. <laughs> so um this is a 55 dollar axe you guys and i would put this axe up in terms of uh after i've i've done uh, a little bit of work to it in terms of fit and finish i would put this up against grants fours holtzbrook helco any of those guys um you got that just gorgeous forged texture there um, I, I'm, it's so humid that my media blaster is not working. Yeah. So I've got, uh, some of that red paint left in the, in the stamping there. Um, I don't hate it to be honest. Um, I might leave it beautiful, beautiful hang here with that poplar wedge, just a little bit of that red paint left on top. Um, I haven't trimmed anything off the sandal. I thought I was going to initially, but I figured I should have at least one 36 inch ax. Um, a lot of people polish up these poles real nicely, grind them flat. I might do that later. Um, the uh, the handle from Council Tool is just, they have their handles dialed in so well. Uh, here, let's get a better stick. You know, you can see that groin orientation. That's how I like it. Uh, 45 degree slope there. And there we go. Bang on with the hang. Duncan's helping me stack my wood here. Thanks, buddy. Uh, you know, this is this is a felling axe. You know, it's three and a half pounds. It's a Dayton. Um, beautiful, beautiful axe. Look at all that wood. For a $55 axe, I promise you, you will not get a better deal anywhere. Um, and that's what's so impressive to me about Council Tool is their axes are so functional and they're they're such a good value with just a little bit of work this thing is uh really heirloom quality and i haven't even you know some guys will take it even further than i have full polish on the bit um polish on the back and grind it flat i haven't done that i might do it i think this axe is well worth your money um, it's you know i i can't recommend this axe enough 55 bucks Takes a wicked sharp edge, beautiful handle. I mean, in terms of just form, beautiful, beautiful handle. I love it. So um, this, this video is probably long enough already. Thanks, Duncan. We'll catch you next time.